when the market realized Amazon would grow 20, 30 percent a year for years and years, the stock re-rated to above 100 times earnings. And then it stayed between 50 and 100 times earnings for a decade long. And this is our call on Tesla. And of course, um, that, that, that call tends to, to transcend you know, what's happening at the moment in the market. Hey, I'm Stephen, and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, Welcome back. So another day, another Wall Street analyst upgrading Tesla stock. This time, Pierre Ferragou of New Street Research upgrading Tesla stock to $900 per share. Pierre also says that there's insane demand for Tesla and they will be production constrained for years to come. He also says he expects Tesla to deliver over 2 million vehicles in 2023 and that most analysts and retail investors out there are far too focused on the short term and missing the bigger picture. So let's get into the video. But first, hey guys, if you'd like to help out the channel and get up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Webull. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $250 just for opening an account. And if you fund your account with $100, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $1,600 unless you don't like free stocks that is and if you're in australia the uk or new zealand you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description let's get back to it joining us now pierre ferragu uh, analyst at new street research pierre has a buy rating on the stock he upped his price target to 900 dollars this morning pierre good timing congrats on that why up to 900 and why today um hey Wilfred, thanks for the question so uh why today well you our job is really to do uh fundamental analysis and, uh, and catch these opportunities where uh, the market is getting concerned by like shorter term risks and, 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 and catching that moment, the market will start looking back uh, at a longer term perspective. So today the stock is down with the rest of the market, more than the rest of the market, because investors are concerned about things like market share losses in Europe. Uh, investors are concerned about delays in the ramp up of new uh, new factories in Europe and in Texas. Uh, and we think these concerns are uh, very short, uh, short sighted. Uh, and the reality is that uh, delays in production are not going to stop Tesla from being able to produce 2 million vehicles annually in 2023. Pierre here rightly asserting that many investors get far too caught up in the short term. Now, in terms of projections, he's expecting that Tesla will deliver around 2 million vehicles in 2023. I'm going to bring up my own projections now. Just for the record, guys, I have two versions of my projections. What I think Tesla will do and what I think Tesla will do in the worst case absolute train wreck disaster scenario. We're just going to look at my bear case, the train wreck disaster scenario for Tesla production. Keeping in mind, I think they will do more numbers than this over time. The units will be higher, but I want to be extremely conservative. And here we are looking at my estimates for Tesla's deliveries, not production. And keeping in mind, once again, this is my ultra bear case. I think these numbers could be plenty higher. In fact, just as an example, 2021, I've got close to 900,000 vehicles delivered, but Shanghai only delivering. 340,000 or so. It's very possible that Shanghai delivers over 400,000 vehicles for the full year. That gives us a bit of a buffer for Berlin and Austin, depending on how many vehicles those deliver, if any, in 2021. But going out to 2022, Tesla delivering one and a half million vehicles per my estimates. 2023, 2.5 million. So Pierre, they're expecting around 2 million vehicles, give or take. I'm half a million above that in my bear case and running out to 24, 25, 26. You guys can see this ramping exponentially up to 20 million vehicles around 2030, 21. And just to show things visually, we've got things mapped out in the graph here. Now, I actually think, again, this is conservative. I think the ramp's gonna happen a little bit sharper towards the middle of the decade and maybe slow a little bit towards the end, depending on Tesla getting close to meeting demand. But in either case, this is on the record and I'd love you guys to keep me accountable. Let's check back in every year or two and see how these early estimates went. And one final point I just wanna make on this ramp, the production is probably gonna follow a similar curve to this. However, it may be a little bit different. It may skew one or two years this direction or that direction, but overall the trend I think is gonna look something like this. And I don't think any Wall Street analysts are really expecting this is gonna play out. I don't think most retail investors are expecting this is gonna play out either, but I'm here to tell you this is going to play out. And when we get there in 2023 with two million uh, uh, units, what we see in the, the traction Tesla is getting today is that there will be more than enough demand to sell this car. So Tesla will still have, uh, will still be supply constrained at 2 million units. That, that's what we take from seeing the success of Model 3 
uh, in the U.S. that is now very well established. How, how, how strong the ramp of Model Y is uh, everywhere, everywhere else in the, in, in the world. And so uh, on that basis, we think in, in, uh, in 2023, Tesla will be in a position to print $12 of earnings per share. And that's basically, and that's basically that flows directly from 2 million units. So how high conviction is 2 million units. And that's more than 50% above uh, where expectations are today. So that means uh, we'd have like two years of very, very strong earnings revision. Very important point here from Pierre. Over the next year or two, there is going to be an endless chain reaction, one after the other, endless, upgrading Tesla stock, upgrading, upgrading, upgrading. Effectively, the releases are going to sound something like this. Herp derp. We have increased our estimates for Tesla deliveries due to stronger than expected demand and sales. Herp derp. We have increased our estimates for Tesla's profitability due to blah, 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 blah. The same thing, right? Everyone's just going to be one after the other. Upgrade, 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 upgrade. Some people today can see that Tesla's going to be scaling very quickly to a million, two million, four million, eight million, ten million, twenty million vehicles delivered by 2030 or so. Most of Wall Street just cannot fathom that this could even be possible, and they're going to wait to need to be slapped in the face with cold hard evidence quarter after quarter after quarter until they finally get it. And so, what we see happening in the next 12 months is short-term concerns are going to get past, uh, are going to get behind us, uh, because these delays in uh, in factory ramp-ups, these market share losses uh, in Europe are things that are not going to last very, very long, just uh, maybe a couple of quarters. And beyond that, we'll have a very very steady steam of mm -hmm. earnings revisions. And what you see is that Tesla today, considered like a hyper growth stock, is probably going to maintain a multiple between 50 and 100 times earnings. And that's how you get to this like fairly, fairly exciting target price of $900 in a year from now. It's still down for the year uh, and for the month and in a bear market, if you want to quantify it that way, down 25 percent from the highs here. Isn't, isn't the latest, isn't the last few weeks a, a an indication of how risky it might be and how tied it might be to the move in treasury yields, the rotation into value stocks and everything else that the market has been focused on so far this year. Oh my God, guys, holy shit. Now, some of you probably think I'm overreacting here, but this is the same boneheaded, short-sighted, short-term thinking that causes investors to lose so much money in the stock market. Let me quote, you guys may have missed that. The short-term nature of the quit. Oh, fuck me. Okay, here's what you just said. And I quote, it's still down for the year. Dude, it's fucking March 11th. We're like 69 days into the year, I think exactly, actually. Hmm, that worked out well. Shout out to the meme numbers. And I continue that quote, it's still down for the year and for the month. Oh my God. All right, so uh, you guys remember that I started buying Tesla stock half a decade ago. I haven't even sold any and I'm still not planning on selling any for another 10 plus years, a 15 year hold period. And here we are in the mainstream finance media concerned about a couple of months into one year. This is exactly the point. Short-term thinking tends to blind investors to the long-term potential and trends. Let me give you guys an analogy, an example here. Just imagine you're so cautious but also so short-sighted that when you walk anywhere, instead of looking out into the distance and surveying your surroundings, looking out to the woods to the horizon, okay, I'm going that way, I've got to go this way, looking for obstacles, no, no, no. You're just literally focused down right in front of every foot. Where am I putting this foot? That foot, this foot, that foot. You know what that kind of short-sighted thinking without having any other perspective will lead you to do? Walk in front of a fucking truck. Bullshit. Because you're too busy looking right down in front of your feet to even look out to the horizon, look anywhere, check your surroundings, any perspective. What's No, 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 no. I just want to make sure this foot's going here, then this foot's going here, then this foot's going here, then you get hit by a truck and you're dead because you're an idiot and you didn't have any perspective. Yeah, so I, I think there is an element of like more of macro market related uh, risk that can uh, uh, impact the stock. I tend not to look at that. Like the, la, as an analyst, uh, what we do with the team is really bring like the fundamental perspective, and we let our clients who are like a portfolio manager, you know, uh, pitch that in their broader picture. So yes, of course, la, 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 very high growth is very highly valued at the moment. Do we have like a fundamental issue with that? Probably not. Uh, we, we like a lot very high growth, uh, very high growth stock. What we bring the picture back, we, we constantly bring the picture back to fundamentals. And look at Amazon in 2011. In 2011, none of what's happening today was happening. But when the market realized Amazon would grow 20, 30 percent a year, for years and years, the stock re-rated to above 100 times earnings. 
and then it stayed between 50 and 100 times earnings for a decade long. And this is our call on Tesla. And of course, um, that, that, that call tends to, to transcend you know, what's happening at the moment in the market. Some much needed longer term perspective here from Pierre, who now has upgraded Tesla stock with a $900 12 month price target, which honestly isn't particularly courageous. We know Tesla stock has already tickled the $900 mark in the past. So this isn't a huge bullish call, but still suggesting around 30% upside from where we are today on Tesla stock. Just out of interest, let me know in the comments below. When do you guys think Tesla stock is next going to pass the $900 mark. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem and I love you all. And don't forget, if you'd like to help out the channel and get up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Webull. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $250 just for opening an account. And if you fund your account with $100, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $1,600. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. Comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.